On today's show, we are back, and the Mavericks are playing basketball this week. This is the way. You you just took off your Mandalorian helmet. Where's it at? I got it back there. The Mando helmet. All kinds of thoughts about Fan Jam, and then we will talk about our five big questions. Maybe six, maybe seven. You know how we work <laughs> before uh, preseason. We'll talk about all that on today's Locked On Mavs. Belenchich, and this is Locked On Mavericks Podcast. Hey, hey, Don't believe you shouldn't be here. And welcome. You are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Engstead, media member and coordinator for the Locked On Podcast Network. And joining me, as always, my co host, writer, contributor at Mavs.com. The Tuesday tyrant, the one more thinking. What you got for me, Isaac Harris? We are uh, we are on preseason eve. The day Ooh. before the first preseason are you sure game. We, are you sure we didn't just finish like a really loud playoff game where you're just screaming your lungs out? I know. I know. My voice has been going out too, so it really feels like that's what it was. But you might need to boost your microphone a little bit. <laughs> I, ju- I do want to say, what? No one's ever told me that my mic volume is low. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, People, lots of people have told I, I want to make a small plug real quick. If you listen, if you missed yesterday's podcast, as Nick was uh, enjoying wearing his Mandalorian helmet in uh, the whole Disney <laughs> world again, we had Iztok Franco on all the way from Slovenia, and he was great. He's such a nice guy. I've really enjoyed his coverage of the Mavericks over the past year or so, and uh, it was just cool to get a Mavericks Luca perspective. Uh, from somebody in Slovenia. So shout out to his talk and go read his latest piece in D magazine. Absolutely. And a really smart basketball mind. It makes me smarter every time I read him. So yeah, that was an excellent podcast yesterday. Go check that out on YouTube or wherever you get your pods, because thanks for making lockdown Mavs your first listen of the day. Like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're available free and available on all platforms, of course, including YouTube where I'm not sure if you've you've ever listened to this, you know this, but all of our Media Day interviews are on YouTube in full as well. Go check that out. We also did some compilations. Uh, Your compilation of the first date advice was incredible. That is a must watch for anybody that needs to go watch. Uh, I also compiled everybody's answer on if Luca is bad at something. What's what's Luca bad at? He's good at basketball. He's good at video games. He's good at pickleball. Is there something that's like non basketball related? We weren't trying to make him say that. Oh, he's really bad at dribbling with his left, right? Like, we're not trying to say that. But uh, so that was fun. Go check that out on YouTube. All right, on today's show, we are getting into our big questions going into preseason. What are what what things can we learn? Let's kind of look ahead at this Wednesday preseason game. They're playing the Utah Jazz, their first game, and so let's get into that. Uh, But before, the the Mavericks actually played, I guess. This is sort of like the uh, college football, you know, blue, white, like red, maize and blue, whatever, whatever scrimmage that they do uh, for spring football. This is sort of like that for the Mavericks. Every single year they do a fan jam or a, what what else have they called it? They've called it other things. Open practice, I think they've called that before. Um, Isaac loves it. He thinks that there's lots of basketball takes to take from it. So he'll share all of his thoughts right now uh but yeah that happened over the weekend and i know for a lot of people that don't live in dallas weren't able to attend it was streaming you can go check it out on the mavs twitch channel so that it is in full there if you want to go watch it here's a couple of my thoughts from it as clip some highlights from it there's a lot of highlights that were clipped on twitter as well i'm sure you can find those all over the place but here are a couple of my thoughts from it um dwight powell in like the, the first couple minutes took a corner three like pretty quickly and so I'm stretch, curious. Stretch five coming. Yeah, are, but but Jason Kidd mentioned this. He said that you know the players are all versatile. They're going to be able to hit you from all different angles. Is he expecting Dwight Powell to be a corner three point shooter? You and I both know that Dwight Powell can hit threes. Wait, is it? It's October, so Wait. we're about what five months away. <laughs> we're five months <laughs> away from March, April. Dwight, who's like an all star. But we know in practice he's been he's been working on threes since he came to the Mavericks, basically. And we've seen him in practice hit like 10 in a row, right? He can hit threes. It just has not translated at all to NBA games. But is Jason Kidd going to ask him to do that? Um, I I As- cannot act like I know what Jason Kidd No, but we're, we're just wants. speculating. These, these are my thoughts after watching Fan Jam. Uh, the starters, that was my first thought, was Dwight taking threes. My second, the starters, Luca, Tim Hardaway, Dorian, KP, and Dwight were the, the white team. Okay, that seems to be your starting five, right? Yeah. Like that's 
That's pretty set in stone now. Blue team. So this is your maybe your second unit. Jalen Brunson, Sterling Brown, Reggie Bullock, Maxi Kleba, and Willie Colley Stein were the backups. Uh, Frank Nilakina and Tyrell Terry did not play. That's another news note that Tyrell Terry is away from the team right now. He returned home for a family reason, so he is not with the Mavericks as of right now. Yeah, um, man, super unfortunate for for Tyrell. We, you know, we had him on uh, the pod last week uh, after media day or on media day. He shared with us uh, his whole reason why he missed it. You know, a good chunk of the season last year. Go back and listen to that. I don't. I think he uh, his words will explain it more uh, yeah. as far as uh, mental health and everything. Uh, so just yeah, this situation is really unfortunate for him right now. I hate that for him. And this doesn't seem related to the issue that he told yeah. us about last season. So I don't. Ho I hope people don't take it as, oh, well, he just always has problems and always has issues. I don't think that's the case. No, it sounds like it's a family thing, and we'll see. You know, yeah, hopefully he can. Um, everything turns out good for him. Um, the the other thing was Frank Nilakina did not play in the Fan Jam event. He was also out on uh, Thursday or Friday's practice and so, with an illness. So maybe that was lingering. We didn't, I don't think we got an actual reason why he was out, but that's also notable. Um, Jason Kidd called a timeout in the fan jam. Oh my gosh. How, how, uh, why? And for what reason? And I was only watching, obviously the broadcast feed it wasn't there in person, but Jason Kidd called the timeout, which he's coaching both teams, right? Like it's, it's the Mavericks on both sides of this. He called the timeout and then he just tied his shoes for most of the, the timeout. <laughs> I'm not sure he was doing anything. I also, coaching wise, though, I found it interesting. Coaching. You're, the, you're not about to bring out a, a coaching tidbit. No, just this. coaching one side of the team. I think that coaching the, the blue team, Tyson Chandler, God okay. Sham God, and Jared Dudley. And on the other side was Sean Sweeney, Greg St. Jean, and uh, Igor. So it's like the former players and the non-former players basically split up the teams. Also, the white team <laughs> and the blue team. Hey, Igor, Igor could up. have balled back in the I, day. Actually, that's true. I'm not sure if he, if he played or not, but the former NBA players and the, yeah. the non-former NBA players. Luka was absolutely unreal in this game. Like it's just It shows just the level of... Luca was crazy. He had like a dribble spin move to a like a step back but spot up three at the same time. Just the way that is how fast he is, his ability to handle the ball. Uh, he had one time where he he got a rebound on one end, one handed baseball pass all the way down the court past Maxi, right right where Maxi couldn't get it to KP for a dunk, like all the way across court and right out of Maxi's reach. Like Luca was just insane. I don't think he missed a single shot the entire time. He was hitting from all over the place. And it just shows how good of a player he is because he can just be that casual and still play well. And I felt like Porzingis was matching the same energy as Luca and did not play as well. He had some, he had a couple turnovers on drives. He missed some shots that were just like, you know, easy, like turnaround jumpers for him. Uh, and it, it just shows the difference in level of play. I'm not trying to bash KP, but it just shows Luca's on this crazy other level. And for KP to try and match that, he, he can't right now. He's just not on that type of a level. Uh, and I found that kind of interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's also fan jam though. Like I, I'm just saying when you're, when you're, yeah. when you're, when you're out there playing, I'm not, t <laughs> not trying to take anything away from KP. It's just that when you're out there and you're playing casual, Luca just looks incredible all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when, and this goes into one of the, um, you know, one of the questions that I, I kind of want to tie into this is that is a point that is talk actually brought, you know, brought up on yesterday's pod and was, I asked him, I said, Hey, are you worried? Like after this crazy off season, after, you know, only like three weeks of training and Olympics and hardly any off time and all this stuff, are you worried that we're going to see even, even more tired Luca? Like we've talked about the fourth quarter stuff and all this stuff. And his talk went the opposite direction. He's like, no, I think he's going to be like more like ready more than ever now because he hasn't had a break to like, in a way I'm paraphrasing this point. He hasn't really had a break to get out of shape. Yeah. Right. So he's like, now he's like stayed in it. And now, it, so it's made me really think that, okay, I went from, man, well, look at kind of like, you know, have a slow start to the season because of his crazy off season. So now I'm kind of swinging the other way of like, is he just going to start off just like <laughs> blazing on fire because he never stopped playing. And he's just like, Hey, while all of you guys get ready to play again in the NBA, I'm like ready from day one. And this MVP season is coming. No, that's the two, that's the two angles, right? It's, is he going to be super ready or is he just going to end up being wear down? And to be honest, we might not be able to answer, be able to answer the one question. Is he ready right out of the gate? 
we'll be able to yeah. know within the first month of the season. The regular he's, season. He's gonna drop a forty pre- ball in the first the one of the first three games, and we're gonna be like, oh, okay. That would be wild, and that then and then hopefully by the time we hit March and April, he's not so like done that basically we're like, oh dang, what what are we gonna do? How are we gonna get him some more time? All that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, all right, coming up, a couple more. Th- no couple more fan more, jam thoughts. Couple more quick thoughts about the fan jam. I have Let's one, go. I have one big one. I know you love fan jam. I love then, it. Great. And then we'll get into some of our big questions going into preseason. So we'll talk about that. But before we do, let me tell you about. Something that's going to save your season for the Mavericks this year, and that what? is Direct TV Stream. Direct TV Stream is your way right now. One of the the few ways that you can actually stream Valley Sports and the Dallas Mavericks this season. It is going to absolutely save your season. Also, it'll simplify the way you get your t- entertainment without the hassle. It's a great way to finally get your TV together. It's called Direct TV Stream. It brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before, so you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. That means no juggling remotes, no need to buy another device ever again, and the best part, there's no annual contract. Get rid of the clutter and the confusion. Get your TV together with Direct TV Stream, and you can learn more at directtv.com, directtv.com, and you can watch your Mavs on there. There's not many places you can stream the Mavs, and DirecTV Stream is one of them. Compatible device required. Content varies by package. Also, I want to tell you about Shopify. Shopify gives entrepreneurs the resources once reserved for big businesses so upstarts, startups, and established businesses alike can sell everywhere. Synchronize online and in-person sales and effortlessly stay informed. Scaling your business is a journey of endless possibilities. Believe me, this podcast started out... Really small. We were we we're not pushing. We're not pushing big numbers. We were just two guys in their essentially mom's basements doing a podcast Whoa. about the Mavericks. And today we are doing incredible numbers. This entire podcast network, honestly, is just doing incredible numbers, doing crazy things. We got bought by a company without tells anything, and we're not stopping there at all because success is a million milestones on a forever evolving path. You just keep going milestone to milestone, milestone to milestone. So we love Shopify. They have the tools and resources to make it easy for any business to succeed from down the street to around the globe. Uh, Shopify powers over 1.7 million businesses. That's insane. 1.7 million. You can reach customers online and across social networks, the never growing suite of channel integrated apps, including Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, and more. You can gain insight as you grow. Possibilities are powered by Shopify. Go to shopify.com slash lockdown MBA. That's all lowercase. That's very important. Lock, shopify.com slash lockdown MBA for a free 14 day trial and get all get full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. Grow your business with Shopify today. Go to shopify.com slash locked on NBA right now. Shopify.com slash all lowercase locked on NBA. All right, Isaac Harris, let's, let me just give you a couple more fan jam thoughts. I know you're Mm. not, a. I know you're, you're, you're all for it, but I know there's a couple people out there that couldn't go. They couldn't see it. They haven't watched it and are curious. First of all, Reggie Bullock is firing. He's got the, the complete like dark green green light. He took a Good. ton of threes, and when those Ooh. when those go down, he starts hitting those. That's going to be great for the Mavericks. Ooh. Tim Hardaway Jr. hit a pretty nice pull up shot early in the game, but he gets he gets kind of he was kind of an afterthought at times in the offense with this. So I'm curious to see how he fits into that starting lineup. He he was off the bench a lot of times last year, and so eventually, will Jason Kidd put him back into that? off the bench role so that he can be more of a focal point when he's out there because when it's Luca and KP, it's the Luca and KP show and Tim Hardaway Jr. is just kind of running around waiting for, you know, scraps <laughs> from the offense, basically. Uh, and then this is kind of my biggest actual takeaway from, from Pan Jam. All the other stuff Ooh. are just like thoughts and questions. Willie Colley Stein should be, if he's going to be the backup center, he should be nervous about Moses Brown because Moses Brown was all over the place. His activity completely stood out. And I have to point out, it was a scrimmage. It was you know, an exhibition game. Doesn't no count. Way. All that stuff. But Will, but Moses Brown went out there like he had something to prove. And he was going for all the rebounds. He was going for blocks. He was going for everything. He was rolling. He was, he was trying to make things happen. And, I thought that uh, I thought he that knew that Nick Nurse was watching. <laughs> he's he's like, hmm. Do we like this guy going Dragic? <laughs> so, but yeah, I think Moses Brown has uh, has an interesting path, and we'll see if he can earn the trust of Jason Kidd to become that backup center, and then maybe even eventually the starting center. But he, I think he's got a little ways to do that. I love that guy. I, I think he's I think he's fun he to watch. In interview. I think he's fun to talk to. Uh, I joke about him, but uh, yeah, man, it, I I hope we do hold on to him. 
All right, give me another one of your big questions going into the preseason. Well, I don't know if you've heard this or not. Um, yeah, this is just something that I heard. It was just a source. So, guys, get ready if you're listening to this in the car. But this is the first healthy offseason for KP uh, in a long time. And I just – I think, honestly, if we could say what is one big question, like the biggest question of all, how healthy is KP? Like, is he – like all star KP that right off the bat, and even not even just off the bat, like a month in, what are we looking at? Is this bubble KP? Are we is he averaging you know 27 and nine and shooting 39% from three? Like, what how healthy is KP? That's the biggest question, right? Is now. it all health though with KP this year? Yeah, I think it is because we know he's coming into the season, he's not rehabbing, right? So if he's fully healthy and back to like normal KP before ACL, then he's anchoring the paint. He's he's much better defensively. He can move defensively. Defense for sure. Ladder, like all of that. He's shooting at a higher clip. Like he's actually taking advantage of mismatch. What pissed us off more than anything last year is when people could throw like a Muggsy Bogues on him in the post and it doesn't like nothing happens. Like he can't take advantage of that. If he is more efficient, he's, if he's healthy enough to make that those possessions more efficient, then that's that's what gets scary. Well, one of my other big questions about KP is is about his role. What's his role on offense? Because Rick Carlisle tried to use him one way, and then he realized that the, you know he had that whole thing with Charles Barkley and Shaq and TNT that the post up isn't efficient, and so KP stopped posting up. Now Jason Kidd's coming in and saying KP is going to post up. So no matter how healthy he is, I think his role in the offense matters a ton. Because he also had a lot of preferences. He also had a lot of things. He's like, I, I like to play more time in the first quarter than in, you know, than get to play four minutes and then I'm out. And so Rick Carlisle, you know, understood that and, and changed Luca's whole rotation pattern for KP. Is Jason Kidd going to do the same thing for KP? What is his, his role in it? So there's two sides of this KP thing. Is it the health that's going to get him back to this all-star level that we know he can play? And obviously he was a 20 point per game score last season. So he's not too far removed from that. Or is it his role? Well, you know, it's just a big question mark with KP. Yeah, I mean, I mean, they're saying all the right things, right? Like, I mean, kids saying everything. Is like, him saying that he's going to post KP up the right thing? I don't know. I mean, because I don't think so. But the sad thing about that is, at at seven three, it should be a it should be a mismatch, right? Like on the wings for sure. Like on the wings thing when about you're him a playing four. Against wings, yeah, yeah. When you're a four, it should be a mismatch in that. So we'll see. We'll see what you know. He caught he caught the ball a few times in the fan jam and made some moves like in the paint. You watched it. In it. <laughs> I saw some clips, you know, here and there. <laughs> There's a lot to take away from Fan Jam. So Stop. when you make like he, it seemed like he moved a little bit more fluid in that you know scrimmage. So let's just see. Like I, I want to see his movement. I think that's the number one thing I'm yeah. watching on Wednesday night. Is how not even like if his shots go in. I just want to see him move. <laughs> I just want to see like how are you moving? Because I feel like when we watched him against the Clippers, like it was so evident of like how like. He was like kind of slow. It's kind yep. of a little bit of shades of DeAndre Jordan, cement, you know, cement block feet. And it's like, what? Hey, Los Angeles Laker, De DeAndre Jordan. Let's he go. He had an alley oop. He had a block. <laughs> uh, I love that your team's old. So they're so old, though. Very, very old. They have like 10 players that have more than 13 years of NBA experience. <laughs> it's nuts. Um, they threw up no. a graphic of like, look at all the Lakers players that have so much experience. You're like, oh my god, that team is. How many All Star appearances does it take to help LeBron? <laughs> I mean, come on, he's got so many. <laughs> but no, I, I'm super anxious. I mean, I think the the biggest question mark around this whole team, the huge. whole ce ceiling of this team, is all around KP. Absolutely huge. Yeah, the, the KP situation is huge. So yeah, you ask about the health, I ask about the role. I think and, both and, both of them matter. And also, how does where does he finish to close games? Is it how committed are they to the yeah. two bigs to close games? Like, it, how committed are they to KP at the four? Like, KP's a four, four, four. Is that just to start games or is that going to be at the end of games? Is he going to, you know, move it to the five? Are they going to bring Reggie in or Sterling Brown or somebody else to, you know, is it dependent on matchups? I just wonder how set in stone and dependent they are or how much they're committed to him at the four. 
Speaking of the Lakers, they had this whole conversation <laughs> this offseason with oh, yeah. you know LeBron and Westbrook sat down with AD and they're like, all right, we got to make this work and figure out what to do. And AD's like, okay, fine, I'll finally play the five. He didn't want to play the five for a long time. That's why you had the JaVale McGee's, the Dwight Howard's, the you know, the Marcus Gasol's, the guys brought in there that to pl- to come in and play the five next to AD. He just didn't want to play there because of injury risk, because of all that kind of stuff. So when will the Mavericks have that type of conversation again? We'll bring that back up again. He, KP was finally playing the five last season, and it worked pretty well. It gave lots of space for Luka and for everybody else. But we'll see if they cycle through this whole thing again of, okay, we're making KP the four, and then all of a sudden we're like, well, maybe that's not the best thing, and then we'll bring it back to him playing the five again. right? Like, yeah. It just seems like they're going to do that whole cycle again. Now that it's Jason Kidd in charge, in charge instead of Rick Carlisle. Because that that's what we're, you know, that's what no one's talking about right now. At least a lot is, like, it's the new, it's the honeymoon stage, right? Like, kids stepping in. Like, we're hearing all these new things. He's talking about the positive stuff. Like, this is how we're going to roll. With it's KP. the honeymoon stage in an arranged marriage, it feels like. <laughs> okay, yeah, there you go. <laughs> and but like we're hearing about oh man we're gonna empower kp he's a basketball player we're gonna get into yeah. basketball we're gonna get him shot so he's gonna be much more involved in the offense he's not gonna be just standing in the corner like we're saying all the right thing we're like yeah 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 but what happened you, i mean you don't you have to be honest about this but what happens if he does get on the post and he's not efficient what happens if he's not moving very well laterally then it's like okay well so that's why he's not that's why he was standing in the corner that's why it was i mean believe it or not i'm gonna try to i'm gonna take up a little bit for rick here it wasn't just all on rick of why it wasn't like this rick just you know spun the wheel and's like kp you're gonna be in the corner of this game no it's because it's like hey what we have been doing with him wasn't working so this is kind of what it got relegated to yep that's what we're going to find out. And we're going to find out how patient this, this coaching staff is, right? How how long yeah. are they going to try things? Because they have this thing set up now where KP is going to be the four, Dwight's going to be the five, and they're going to post up KP. Two things that we kind of know, all right, don't necessarily, like the KP posting up at least isn't the most efficient thing. How long will they let it go until they're like, okay, let's try and weed those things out or try something different with them. Yeah. All right, coming up, more thoughts from us. We got some big thoughts on the role players. We got some big thoughts on Jason Kidd himself and how he's going to coach. More, there's huge questions about him. Him and Luke, him and KP are the biggest question marks. Uh, and so we'll talk about that coming up. But before we do, let me tell you about betonline.ag. It's the fastest and easiest way to bet, to put down some money, to wager, to gamble, to put money on sports. Right now, the Dallas Cowboys opening up against the New York Giants at home. Isaac, you got a guess on the line here. You want to play guess the lines? Um, I'm going to say the Cowboys are a plus six. playing the New York giants at home. The no, I'll, Cowboys say, are I'll, home. Play, I'll say a plus seven Ooh, uh, opposite. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A, yeah. 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 Seven. They're a minus seven. They're a seven point favorite for the Dallas Cowboys. Is that really what it is? Absolutely nailed it. Yeah. Let's go. A touchdown favorite for the Dallas Cowboys against the uh, New York football giants. So if you want to put down some money on the Dallas Cowboys, and by the way, if you want to know more about the Cowboys, go listen to Lockdown Cowboys. Uh, you can put down some money on betonline.ag. Use the promo code LOCKDOWN to get a 50% welcome bonus to your first deposit. BetOnline, your online sportsbook experts. All right, Isaac Harris, we're back. We're getting some more thoughts on training camp, on fan jam, on the preseason that's starting on Wednesday. Let's get another big question. One of my big questions, after KP probably, my big question is about Jason Kidd. How does Jason Kidd handle his first issue, the first problem, the first situation, the first thing where maybe it's the Luka and KP relationship actually becomes an issue, or maybe it's KP makes a comment in the the media about his role on the team or his minutes on the team, or maybe it's, uh, you know, Luka is frustrated with the way that Jason Kidd coaches, right? Like there's so many different things that could pop up in an NBA season. A role player is unhappy with their role, someone other than Luka or KP. How does he handle it? How does Jason Kidd handle things? And a lot of these things get on the line. A lot of things we (laughs) make sure you touch all the line, touch the line. (laughs) A lot of these things we may not know. We may not know how he handles a lot of these things until somebody writes some tell all book or something. But will he make adjustments? Will he will he make adjustments in the game? Will he make adjustments like we saw Rick Carlisle do? Uh, And will he do it quick enough? Or will he do it with enough? tact i'll put it that way yeah i mean we just we don't know how 
We haven't seen him as a head coach in a long time. So how's he changed since Milwaukee, Brooklyn days? And how you, you know, Rick had a certain way. You know, Rick wasn't going to give you very much when it comes to the media. How will Jason Kidd, you know, I feel like even over this first week of talking to us every day in training camp, I feel like we've already gotten a little bit more than we would have ever gotten from Rick of, hey, KP's going to start at the four, Dwight at the five. Like, you know, I don't think we would have really gotten that from Rick right off the bat. And so I don't know. Like, we'll we'll see how much more opening is going to be. If there is some friction, will he just call it out? And he's like, yeah, there is some friction right now. Like, we're dealing with that. We're working through it. I've seen it before. Like, we we don't know how that well, we don't know what kid I, I joked at the yeah. you know beginning of the pod of like when you're like hey what are they gonna you know is he gonna expect that from Dwight Powell this is just where we're at right now all of us media players everybody in the organization all the fans we don't know about Jason Kidd right now so we're all just like waiting and just seeing how it plays out and it seemed like in Milwaukee he was sort of a my way or the highway kind of coach but we've heard the right things from him and then we've heard from people that have been around him, that he has learned from Frank Vogel in LA. He learned, and he said at his introductory press conference a bunch of times, I learned that I don't know what I don't know. And he also said that, uh, you know, to, to, uh, he also said to, to, to allow other, like other influences to let other people sort of help basically to to take ideas from other people. That was another big idea that he shared. And I was like, dang, that's interesting stuff coming from, from Jason Kidd, from all the things we heard about him in Milwaukee, I hope it's true, and I hope it gets yeah. put into practice because that'll be that'll be a positive thing for the Mavericks. All right, other than other than KP, other than Jason Kidd, what's another big question you have going into the preseason? I mean, we kind of touched on it earlier, but I just want to see who gets the five minutes. I want to see how it shakes out between Dwight, Willie, and Moses. Uh, I'm not I'm leaving out Bobon because I think Bobon's role is pretty set. It's going to be the same as last year, like. He's going to set out. I mean, he's, he's going to be a lot of DMPCDs. There's going to be some matchups that work out better for him, and he'll he'll step in there. And if they're getting beat, you know, he'll he's the you know seven four JJ Barea of like just throw it in. It's clunky. Let's just see if we can get something offense going. So I just want to see how Willie Moses Dwight shake out. Who gets the minutes and all that? Boban is like if I'm going to make it a, a try sports analogy right here. Boban is somehow the knuckleball pitcher and also like your, yeah. uh, yeah, he's, he's that, but also the wildcat formation in football, right? Like he's, he's, all, he's like both of those things at once. Cause if you need, you need some offense, like direct offense, you throw him in there, but he's also just a completely different look. He's also, like Tim Wakefield and Ronnie Brown at the same had time, a, had a baby and it's <laughs> <laughs> made up, made a Madden or made an NBA, my career player and did it together. Right. There you go. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so th- that's going to be huge. I, and I really do think Moses Brown knows that he doesn't have a set role in this rotation. I think that's why he was trying so hard in Fan Jam, right? Like, bless his heart. Uh, but that's great. That's what you want to see from He's like, so Papados is on the line. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody bet him, right? <laughs> uh, but he shows some things that none of the other guys have. He's somehow longer than Willie Colley Stein. And he has he's a better knack for rebounding than than, than Willie Colley Stein does. He's definitely a better finisher than, than Willie Colley Stein is because there are some there's a couple of of finishes that Willie Colley Stein didn't hit in Fan Jam that were like, really? You didn't finish that? You're like a seven year you know, <laughs> player in the NBA. Well, Moses Brown, he makes mistakes for sure. He does stuff that you're like, wait, why? Why did you do that? Right? There's just all there's all these positive and negatives, which is why these guys aren't for sure starters. But how will it play out? It'll be interesting to see. Yeah, and so can I give you my last question? Yeah, I got one more too. Well, I I just think this is more of like more preseason ish, but it actually does matter too a little bit. You know, what's the what's the last roster move? Like they got to make a a roster move. We've heard all the stuff about Trey Burke. We're not going to say and get into Trey Burke stuff. Trey Burke looked looked good at Fan Jam. Yeah, but like, you know, before even the vaccination status of Trey Burke came out, we were already speculating like, oh, Trey's going to be as soon as Frank, you know, signed we didn't process the whole, like they had an open roster spot. They kind of snuck it in there on a press release earlier with EJ Onu and like all this stuff. And we're like, Oh, that means Trey Burke's going to be gone at that point. And we're like, Oh no, Trey doesn't have to be gone. Frank's here. They still got to make some moves. So now it's like, they got to make at least one move. Yep. And whether it's, you know, I think it's, it's easier money wise if Frank doesn't work and then they're like, oh, okay, we'll cut bait, cut bait with Frank's money at that point. But if you want to hold on to Frank, which, I think we both want them to hold on to Frank. Um, we just like Frank. Yeah. Yeah. We love Frank. So it's like, 
then you have Trey Burke, who makes more than a, you know a minimum contract. So a little harder to just like eat that money and just cut him. But it, it it's also a little harder too to find a team right now who's cutting back rosters to say, hey, we're gonna trade you a four million dollar player in Trey Burke to take up a roster spot on your team who, whenever you're about to cut players who also won't get vaccinated. It's gonna so there's two, there's two sides. There's the it's easier money wise to get rid of Frank Nilakina, and then it's 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 probably easier COVID logistics reasons to get rid of, like to get rid of Trey Burke, right? But then you have to look at and that's not even looking at the two basketball players, right? Yeah. Because then because I mean this is obvious too, but if you're trading Trey Burke to clear up a roster spot, then you're not gonna take back a player. So no. You gotta find a team who has cap space, who ha- who has an open roster spot or is willing to open up a roster spot and so then all I mean, of a sudden you're giving assets to like OKC for them to take him, right? Like I know, just- and that's the thing. It's like, how mad would Mavs fans be if Dallas said hey, they traded a second round pick in Trey Burke to like OKC and you're giving up a draft pick to get off of Trey Burke's contract? Like, I don't know. I don't know if they'd be that mad, but maybe just irked. <laughs> I could name a few people who would be mad. <laughs> <laughs> My last big question is, can any role players take a step forward? We, we've talked about these guys all offseason as if they're the same players they were last year, but can Tim Hardaway Jr. take another step forward as maybe a ball handler or as you know a guy that can carry a little bit more offense than just I'm a catch-and-shoot shooter? Can Jalen Brunson... But he's fine in that role. Like He is fine in that role. I, I want to say, like, I, I don't want us to, like, set a, a, a thing for Tim of saying, like, man, he's got to go to a whole different, like, he's got to be Clay Thompson now. And it's like, I don't... I don't think he, he I don't can't. even think Clay Thompson is is the player of, of what I'm talking about. Can he do a little bit more with the ball is what I'm saying. Can okay. can Tim Hardaway Jr. take a little bit of a step forward? Like Chris and, Middleton and do yeah, do a little bit more with the ball like that, right? Handle it a little bit. Can he can he do some stuff like that? Can Jalen Brunson take a step forward and yeah. you know, that's the big that he's probably the biggest one. Can he take a step forward and become more of that secondary creator the Mavericks need? Or even just the off the bench creator that the, that the Mavericks need. Create he can create shots for himself. He's great at that. He was hitting that fan jam. But uh, can he create for other people? Yeah, and because like, and this isn't a disservice to these guys, but like I feel like Maxi and Dorian, like when they were at their peak last year and healthy, I feel like that like that's what they like cap out at, which is fine for role players. Role players, it's just perfect. we, we preached so much last year like it was never them that was the problem it was the problem the problem was this you know the two three four guys on the roster that you know kp the and like all the, Your, yes the, the, the ranking of those so that's why if like in a way i'm like man if dorian can be what he was last year awesome if maxi can be what he was last year when he was healthy awesome like it's Jalen brunson can Jalen brunson take that next step to where he is a bona fide like secondary type of guy who can help run the offense when you know Luca's off the floor he hears all the stuff that you ask him about on media day like hey you've yep. heard all the secondary creator stuff you've heard Mark Cuban say it here in Dallas about how the Mavericks need that why can't you be that guy and so I you know that's what he's asking himself and telling himself right now he took ownership for the Clippers loss he did I don't think he needed to do that but he said yeah. I let one he's like we let one slip I let one slip when talking about the Clippers series last season. So yeah. he knows that there's some some stuff there. But that's a big question. Can a role player take a step forward? Can Jalen Brunson make us forget about Goran Dragic? <laughs> Basically, yeah. right? Like, we didn't think Dragic was coming in as an all-star. So Jalen Brunson doesn't have to hit the level of an all-star. It just has to be a, a pretty good role player, like a really good role player. So uh, is anyone else do you think, like, okay, can this guy take a leap and maybe that'll open up some stuff or change some stuff for the Mavericks? Um... Like Moses Brown, we kind of already talked about, but that would be yeah, a, that would be yeah. a pretty big step forward. I don't think so because I mean I think like when we're talking about huge steps, like I don't think Reggie, I don't think Tim, like the best version of them are of, of them are great. I just don't know yeah. if there's a huge step. I don't know what that next huge step is for them. And I think Brunson is the one that. What is that big step for Brunson? Yeah, I think that's that's definitely the big one. Um. Yeah, I don't think or, or Amaru. <laughs> the be, two, uh, the two guys. My last Chris, Ar- Chris Arnold, by the way, at, during Fan Jam was doing the PA announcing, and uh, could not get Omaru's last name. We love uh, Chris Arnold, but just could not get. It. And so eventually, he just said every time oh, Eugene Omaru hit a shot or dunked or something, he go Eugene. <laughs> he just kept saying his first name the whole time. That's awesome. 
Oh, last question I have is how good will the new uh the new jerseys look Ooh, on the floor? We got we saw uh, them in person. Yeah, it's all a We glimpse, never talked so, about that. Yeah, we never did. But uh I think they look pretty good. So uh we'll see uh what they look like on the floor. Cause on the floor, we joke about this. When you see them on the floor on any jersey on the floor, it does change. I think it does. I think it does change how you view a jersey and everything. So yeah, you gotta see them in person to make your full your full opinion about them. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Those are our big questions. Guys, thanks so much for making Locked On Mavs your first listen every single day. We'll be back with you tomorrow to talk more about the Mavericks versus the Jazz. There's a game tomorrow when you're listening to this show. There will Take be a game. Take that, that Locked night. On Jazz. Who, is, who does Locked On Jazz? I don't know. Oh, yeah. My boss, David Locke. Go listen to either Locked On Jazz or you can listen to Locked On Fantasy Basketball as your second listen today. Josh Lloyd doing amazing stuff every single day. Guys, thanks so much for listening to Locked On Mavs. Peace out. Boom.